Hello and welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent guest for you, but before I go ahead and introduce you to the guest, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out our, all our previous content, magnificent guests there. Also, let me acknowledge our partners, the Digital Health platform Clinitouch V and our industry partner, Isaac Kerr. And now let me introduce you to Danielle Siari. She is a clinical advisor, speaker, health IT advisor, and a clinical marketeer. Danielle, how are you? I am wonderful. I'm so excited to be with you today and to have this conversation. Thank you for inviting me. Brilliant, Danielle. Nice to see you. I mean, we've been friends for quite a long time. It's, it's really a pleasure to have you here. I'm, I'm really excited. And we, we have been friends for some time. We've met so many different countries all over the world. So I'm excited to have this conversation with you. I'm, I'm so excited to be on your channel. Brilliant. Danielle, thank you so much for uh, accepting the invite. I'm going to go straight to the topic. And today we are here to talk about nursing informatics globally and folding AI into practice. And the first question that I have for you, Danielle, is how are informatics nurses furthering the education on AI and machine learning? Well, the last couple of years, I've been looking into it myself globally, talking with different companies um, in the health tech space that are focusing on machine learning and artificial intelligence, and then having a global conversation with nurses. How are they furthering their practice? How are they uh, understanding these new concepts? Um, what are, are they doing individually and as a group to forward the practice? So in my research, I found in the U.S., the Health and Human Services, HHS, has invested um, over $70 million into uh, several uh, underserved um, universities to further their health technology uh, education for their students. Uh, I found a uh, university in Florida where nurses are getting their um, undergraduate, their bachelor's in nursing, and actually folding into some summer courses in Python and calculus, and then furthering that with, um, in the engineering department, getting an artificial intelligence master's. Uh, talk to uh, legacy nurses that are taking anywhere from LinkedIn courses, so Coursera courses, um, joining different organizations and having um, a broader conversation outside of nursing collaborating with um, with different uh, data management engineers. There's a local group called ACT-IACT um, on the East Coast in DC, and they're doing a public-private partnership. And uh, we're all just coming together, collaborating, kind of sharing our knowledge, what we know, um, how can we push it forward. Uh, a lot of nurses taking courses in Python. And the why this is important, when you want to purchase uh, a product for a large organization or, or for a large hospital, you want to understand how it works, how it can help um, other clinicians, as well as how it's going to help the patient. Uh, if you don't understand these products or be able to have those conversations, it kind of diminishes your purchasing power. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic insights there. Danielle, thank you so much. Of course, education is really important. And I always feel that is the missing link in healthcare, but I have this uh, feeling, and this is an assumption, that actually the nurses are very active in terms of furthering the, the education in different ways. So thank you for that. The second question that I have for you is, why is it important for informatics nurses to be part of the AI conversation? Well, we tend to be the translators. We're the ones that can have a conversation with the different businesses, the hospital administrators, the clinicians, and we can explain what the other parties are kind of conversating and talking about. And will this product bring value to the organization? Will this product bring the necessary tools uh, to solve the problem? So usually what I would start looking at is what is the problem and then finding a solution versus having a solution and trying to fit it into a problem. Um, really looking at the nurse's pain points to be able to sit with a fellow nurse and explain, you know, these tools may seem advanced, but this is how it can, you know, 
better managed for your staff, whether it's time management, whether it's organizational management, where it's like um, some basic triaging to help before. So I think that's the big piece for nursing informatics, where that cog in the wheel that can kind of just move through and make, make everything seem seamless in these conversations that bring all the parties together. So one's not going, what does this person mean? What does that person mean? How, how can we correlate all of this together? So from what I've been seeing in trends, um, whether it's in the US or, or other countries, say maybe like a Norway, uh, higher organizations, uh, they're looking towards say maybe the American Nursing Association, looking how can they fold AI in? Does it belong like an AI nurse in her own department or his or her own department, or does it belong with specifically with nursing informatics? So there is already conversation um, from what I heard of last year of how to fold this into a practice. Um, is it gonna be added in with your certification as part of your, your general practice? So that's kind of how I see the merge between nursing informatics and artificial intelligence, how it grows and it furthers in the future, kind of bring it all together. Um, in the health tech space. Brilliant, Daniel. Thank you so much. And also translate, um, I mean, the information into like a, a, an uncomplicated and very digestible way because everybody talks about uh, artificial intelligence and sometimes can be a layer of complexity. So thank you for um, your insights there. And the third and last question that I have for you, which falls down really nicely, follows up really nicely is, how could informatics nurses fold AI into practice? I think it starts with just a basic understanding. Um, I do a lot of finding books from different sources and spreading them as I travel. I picked up a book the other day and I, I came back to my desk and I said, Where'd my, where's my book? And someone wrote me later, like, oh, I saw a book in your desk and, and I took it. It was just so... You know, I was just so interested and I was like, oh, that's fine. I probably have a second copy someplace else. Uh, but it starts with um, the reading and education, doing a lot of like use cases and sharing those use cases to understand where you can kind of see merit where it works together. Because a lot of um, people's questions are, well, I, I want to solve this problem versus they get a lot of solutions and then trying to fit it into the problem. So really it's um, an everyday practice, whether it's joining a group and having those conversations, whether it's taking um, an online course and networking with the people within those groups, um, writing. I, I might research the topic and um, for a problem and then produce something and then put it out and then have those conversations. Um, I, I talk a lot about the business of nursing and this to me is becoming part of the business of nursing um, because if you're not at the table, you're going to be dictated to and you're going to be stuck with trying to take that solution and fit it into your problem. So if you make it part of your daily conversation, your your research, your reading, um, looking for partners for, for the problems that you have, that's kind of you can fold it in and to make it part of your practice. Oh, brilliant. Danielle, we could talk for hours about this subject. I really like the way you address the questions. Um, uh, thank you so much for your time, your expertise and everything. I'm not sure if you know about this, but I finish all my episodes in a peculiar way, which is not a question as such. It's called One Minute of Fame. So you can talk about anything, your professional achievements, I mean, personal life, a shout out to anybody, companies, collaborations, anything whatsoever. Over to you before I round up. One minute of fame. One minute of fame. <laughs> I, I always like this section on your um, on your channel, and I purposely didn't prepare so I can do it, you know, on the fly. And I would say my one minute of fame. Uh, there's a lady named Wendy Carroll that I just turned in my manuscript to, and we're doing a playbook, um, a collaboration with different informatics nurses. To explain nursing from the bedside to the boardroom. And so I just turned in my manuscript for her. And so it's a collaboration also with HIMSS that'll come out next year. Um, I've been working with uh, several other nurses lately and uh, another one named Zamora Upton. We've been collaborating, learning about AI together and kind of doing a, a shared research and a shared understanding. Um, and I would say those are my two big shout outs right now. And uh, I really enjoyed having this conversation with you. 
And somehow you and I wind up on some of the same lists together across the world. And so I give you a shout out because we were recently put on a list together. So uh, I think it was like CDW Health, Health Tech Magazine. So I give you my roundup of my shout out, my one minute thing. Daniel, thank you so much. You are so kind. Also, I mean, you gave a really true practical examples of collaborations. I know you are a true collaborator and uh, a people person like me that like to connect people, learning and everything. So look, Daniel, thank you so much for being in here, for being a friend, for being an in industry expert. And uh, I'm going to round up now. Thank you so much and really nice to see you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'm going to round up now to our viewers and listeners. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, I'm going to post Danielle's LinkedIn and Twitter here. She's very active on social media. Engage with her, talk to her, ask her questions. She's a true industry expert, been in this space for quite some time. And to finalize, acknowledge our uh, partners, the digital health platform, Clinitouch V and our industry partner, Isaac Kerr. And I'll see you all next week.